Hey everyone, welcome back to I Would Like to Have a Conversation. Ruby, say hello. Hello. Theo, say hello. Hello. Simon, say hello. Well, hello. <laughs> this episode is episode 20. We've done 20 episodes. We're back with Todd again, and this one we talk about chasing experiences. Good handshake, Simon. <laughs> chasing experiences and making sure you're enjoying and getting the most out of life. Does that sound cool? Yeah. Yeah? 20 episodes in, you reckon we're going to get another 20? Yes. Yeah, we're going to. We're going to do it. 100 more. I know, that sounds good and crazy. Till I'm a teenager. I like the idea of that. All right, let's say goodbye to everybody. Say goodbye, Simon. Bye. 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 Hey, everyone. Welcome back to I Would Like to Have a Conversation. This is episode 20, the May 20. I should actually go check the stats. I can't remember. But they are not many people make it to 21, I think. So we've got one more. And we're like, yeah. But um, yeah, like Todd and I were just talking before we started. And it was a good, passionate rant. Not like a, I think there is good rants and there's bad rants. This was a good rant. And it was like on the lens of experiences where kind of like we don't want to, what we want to talk about today is like hopefully to inspire people to I guess make that transformation or do that thing or get moving to where they need to go and just start chasing really deep experiences and I was say doom and gloomy, not hope they happen where anything could happen and you just get knocked out of the game, so to speak. Yeah. Does that makes sense. And using yeah. and using like our past using our history as a way to in our in our past experiences as a way to um as lessons as a way for us to show up wiser and more presently because we have these experiences and not not so not so much be the victim like oh you know like for example i lost my dad when i was 20. i certainly carried the victim card for many many years um and it probably wasn't until 15 i can't remember 15 or 18 years later it's been 20 now did did that mindset switch and and you know every year when his his uh, anniversary came around it was like oh poor me and then as as i started working through this i was like oh how can i use this mm. to live differently you know what can i learn and now what can i take from this because he's gone i can't I, we can't change that so what can i what can i use this experience for and it, what it taught me was like i can i can you know, be absolutely more present for my children. I can uh, be, you know, healthier because he, uh, you know, wasn't all that healthy. He was, you know, I call it at, in his prime, he was five foot 10, 350 pounds. So he was a big guy, mm -hmm. you know, and he drank and he, you know, uh, used food to, to comfort. But um, anyways, the whole idea is like to be able to look back on that experience and say, well, well, how can I, how can that help me in the, in this present moment? How can that help me as a dad, as a, as a, as a husband, you know, as a, as a practitioner and, and as a coach in, when you start to ask those questions and, and view things differently, um, it allows, it, it, it opens up so much more, I guess, possibility for how your life can turn out. And hopefully I summarize that well. Yeah. Thank you. Dude. It's kind of, the thing that popped into my head, like we've talked about this a few times now, the bound nature, free nature thing. And I was reading over my free nature yesterday, which is like the things I want to be able to do. And it was meant to be this quarter that I was meant to go on these adventures and stuff. Like the whole idea of the, like the backyard adventure, but at least every weekend there's some kind of adventure. It could be something really small. We take the kids on a trail walk or it could be a little bit bigger and we go camping somewhere or I'll go for a trail run and we can go over the weekend and it could go over a few days, all that kind of stuff. It was meant to start in this quarter. I haven't done one. Like, cause I've had the hip injury and then I, <laughs> you'll laugh, I tore my groin in training when I come back from the hip injury, but I played on the weekend. I just, we just did mad rehab and strapped it up and I got through the whole game. So I'm limping my way through the rest of the soccer season, basically. And then, yeah, so all those things I've put down in my free nature. And the whole idea is, is like to look at that story and go, cool, we'll write, talk about how it's true now. And I was writing it down like, oh, none of this is true yet. So it just made me in my head like, I'm not going after the thing I want to go after. So it happens to like, everybody where we get stuck 
or pulled into that survival mode of just getting through where like Caddy's going through a phase of her work where she's doing some like really hard conversations with other people in her job. Um, so she's cooked, completely smashed. So I'm basically taking the load of the kids as much as I can to soften the blow for her. She's got longer hours and shit like that. But it's so, so easy to fall back into that survival mode and just sort of forgetting the the whole reason we're trying to do shit. Like the reason we work is to have good experiences. This is what I believe. So you can pay for these awesome experiences so you can have a a full and enriching life. And then right now it's got like <laughs> working to be able to look after the kids and feed them and then just literally do nothing else because we're just both cooked. But we know if we did the thing, it would make us feel good. It's like a, it's very easy to fall back into that trap. So I, I wanted to share that because what you said kind of brought it into my head. Because even though like we talk about the shit that we do all the time and we're like, not like we're sitting on a rock saying like, you need to be like us, but we fuck up. Yeah. Often. And we fall back into the trap often because it's what our brain wants. It's what it knows. Like my brain knows how to hit some, to do survival mode stuff. It's been doing it for ages. I don't want to do that anymore. I want to be in a thriving kind of mindset. So it's active work from me to journal it, to catch myself, to get myself into that stage or that frame of mind to go chase those experiences, like you said, whatever those experiences are. This is cool. And, and even, and even in, in, if you don't mind, even in the, the example that you gave, if you're in a position where you can't go chase like these, uh, I don't want to say this, but like, if you can't have that like experience that you, you've written down, yeah, I still look at it as, as like in the experience that I can have. Right. Yeah. Even when you are feeding the kids and and being you're both cooked from whatever it is, how can I still show up cooked in a way that I one of the themes for the coaching calls today was I asked for this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everything in my life I've asked for, whether yeah. I realize it or not. And I know that's taken massive ownership and some people might argue about cancer and all these other stuff, but like but anyways, I'm just just to the idea of like I've asked for this responsibility. And I want to every moment of every day show up and be like, life, bring it, you know, yeah. bring it because I'm ready. And I think that's, that's part of what these other experiences that might be deemed negative allow and help me to do is when I'm in the shit, <laughs> you know, when my kids are hitting each other and <laughs> punching each other because <laughs> I got two boys and they're just sometimes like feral dogs. Um, <laughs> they, uh, <laughs> They, um, I, I have to, I have to smile at times and, you know, there's times I get, I get caught up in it and I get frustrated, but then I smile and go, all right, I asked for this. Like, I got two boys. What I expect, you know, they're three years, yeah. like less than three years apart. Like, you know, they've got emotions and they're humans and, um, you know, so now I just try to get down on their level and, and talk to them and say, Hey, listen, like, how can I help you work through this and, and be a completely different parent? Not completely. There was some really cool things about my parents, but be a different parent in the sense of like trying to understand what this human is going through. And that's the experience I'm looking for as well. So, mm. yeah. Some, yeah. Something else is just sort of popped in my head. So you, do you know that you like your life in weeks? Have you seen that stuff? I have. Um, yeah. I haven't, I haven't done the math, but yeah. Yeah. So if anyone's listening, this is, it's from like the 4,000, 40,000 weeks or whatever that book is. But there's like, you go to a website, just type in your life in weeks and you can go to this page and you put in your age and it colors out in red the weeks that you've lived so far. And it shows you if you live to that age, how much you got left. It's super sobering because you look at it and you're like, I went through and I started, I printed it off and started highlighting bits. It's like, cool. So this is where I left Wollongong and this is where I was started becoming started drinking a lot. And then it was like this big chunk. I was like, this is where I was an alcoholic. This is where I went bankrupt because of my alcoholism and all those things put in there, which is all like cool experiences. But I had, I went back. I was like, 
can I remember the good experiences I had? It was really, really hard mm. to sort of go back and find those good experiences and stack them in there. So the idea I've got now from now moving forward, and like from the last probably two, three years, I've kind of started planning it in there, is like having this 4,000 weeks and having a journal inside Notion where the highlights of the week, what were really good that I can go back to really quickly, like just a brief one-liner. Yeah. So I can go back into and be proud of the highlights, big or small. But then now that this is like leaning into this idea of like creating this change, this transformational, getting excited about showing up, showing up for shit. So the conversation kind of came around before the call was like, how can we help people to show up for shit without motivation? That's the way I kind of look at it. Like if you need motivation to do it, then you probably haven't got like a big enough thing to make it really excited to do it. Like you just like, you'll start showing up for stuff if you, you have all these things that you love to do. And it's not even a chore. You just do it because I like to be able to be this person. And it's kind of the way I want to go with this convo is I'm lost in my own thoughts, but the, for people listening, it's like, what experiences do you want for the rest of your life? Like, I know we kind of lean into the fitness and health stuff a lot, but it could be anything. Like, you're hating your nine to five. Do you want to have that experience for the rest of your life? You don't have to. I get it. There's bills and mortgages and all that shit. Like, all that's there. It's legit. But you still don't have to. It's still a choice. Right. And you can move to where you want to go. Which is a big thing around space builders, which is the whole concept. Which actually, I think it, it launches in like three weeks. Let's the, do it. Just for anybody listening, do a quick mm -hmm. plug on that. So that way um, you don't have to just throw it in the show notes. Yeah. So the Space Builders Summit, it's going to be on the 14th, 15th of September. And there's 14 speakers. I'll put some trailers in the show notes so you can check it out and you can go check out the website. By the time you listen to this, the website will be live and it's for men and mainly dads and then dads who are seeking adventure and trying to make those experiences in their life. And it doesn't have to be crazy adventure. Literally the world's greatest adventure is being a parent anyway, the stuff you learn, the things you learn about yourself. So it's like, how do we take, the stuff that we already have in our life and apply a more exciting meaning to it and then start moving towards this idea of a life that you want to have. And it could be like this cr crazy concept that we want to build a tribe of dads wanting to build their perfect average life as crazy as they might think they might be now. We want to all go in that direction or build our perfect average lives together. So yeah, I was putting the show notes and stuff, but yeah, the whole concept was, because I wanted to have a life where I was available for the kids, go find adventure, which is stuff I love to do. And then the career I have is just to facilitate those two. It's pretty much the way I wanted to play out with the hours available and I can do all those things. And like, I'll probably dive more into work now, but as the kids are young, I want to be there when they want to be around me. As soon as they get to the age where they don't yeah. want it, I'm like, cool, I can work more if I want to. So it's kind of like giving choice and options again, and how can you do it? So yeah, that kicks off in like two to three weeks, but when, because we've been coaching for ages and we've all, we've probably both had the frustration of talking to someone who we can see clear, like clearly see, clearly clear, clearly see needs to have a massive transformation. Like they need to make a shift because it's not going in the right direction for us, for what we're looking at. But we've haven't been able to help that person for whatever reason. And a lot of the times I feel now it's like, yeah, they know they need to get in shape and work on that stuff, but there's, they don't have anything to, to do that for. So they get it, but then the life is the same. But like they're leaner and healthier, yes, which is perfect. 
And some people can let that run with that for the rest of their life and still stay in the same kind of stuff that they were already in, but just did a leaner, fitter version of what they were. So they got more capacity, which is awesome. But I feel like a lot of people who really struggle to make this shit stick is like, I feel like it's a subconscious thing. It's like, I'll get this thing, but then my life's still shit. Like I've still got the same feelings. I've still got the same experiences. I'm still doing the same shit every day. What's the point? That is really challenging to sort of work past. You can sort of willpower your way through it, but eventually your willpower battery will die because there's nothing fueling it to keep yourself going. So it's very much, I think, and which is, I think, which is the big shift now because everyone knows what they need to do to get lean. Everyone knows it. A lot of it has to do with like, we all, which we kind of already know this too, like why are we getting lean? What are we getting lean for? But even going deeper, like who do you want to be? What are your values? What is this type of person you want to live as? And I think it's just like a, it's a good conversation to have, but I don't think a lot of people do have. Do you kind of agree? I 100% agree. I, I, I will share with you, this is the, the people that end up doing great as far as not only achieving results, but also being able to tie it to this deeper purpose. I I call it the aha moments. Mm. Um, I just recently got an opportunity to listen to Mark Magna. Now over here in the States, he was, uh, so my, my office is in fall river, Massachusetts, and he's a, he's a, he's a kid from fall river that grew up that ended up um, playing at the university of Richmond for football. And he actually played on the new England Patriots. And it was all because of his, the way he, you know, he just talked about his story and how he showed up. And what was really interesting was he, he came to talk to a bunch of young kids um, and the store or the comment, or excuse me, the, the message, part of the message was, it all comes down to a lot of it comes down to is the conversation that you're having with yourself. Mm. And I think what maybe where you were going or, or whatever it is, <laughs> we can have the conversation with people, but ultimately how deep are you going with yourself? What kind of question, challenging questions are you asking yourself? And what I always tell people is I don't have the answer you do. And so whatever those questions are, most of the time people are just going to stop and be like, well, let's go look outside of me to try to find this answer. Or I hope someday it comes to me. And no, the hard work is when you can sit down and answer the question. Why the, am I not going to the gym? <laughs> All right. Mm. And then ask yourself, and when you think you have the answer, ask why again, right? Because when it doesn't feel right or it feels superficial, it's because it is superficial and you haven't actually given yourself the right, you know, the, the answer that's going to help drive you um, to, to take, you know, to create change. And so I just thought in anyways, fast forward, Mark Megna is actually a trainer, a really well-known trainer in Miami. Um, just opened up a, a beautiful facility doing just, just, you know, doing great and has like, I think like 200 and some thousand followers, like, <laughs> you know, you know, he's just like, he's, he's like this kid from fall river. And it's a, it's a city where, you know, a lot of people have trouble getting out per se. Um, but his message was just beautiful. It's like, show up, do the work. And you know, what, what kind of conversations are you having with yourself? And I just smiled because it was exactly what I say to people. Like, you know, when they kind of look at me for the answer and I was like, well, what, what, what's the answer? You know, like you're asking yourself these questions, but what's the answer? And they're like, I don't know. Some people will literally say, I don't know. And then some people, when I ask them, they smile and they're like, I know. I'm like, yeah. well, do you, do you, you know, like, because if you knew you would do it, um, like deep in your heart, knowing and, and often referred to as the G the, the, the gnosis, if you will. Um, but anyways, I don't know if that was a tangent, but I got really fired up over, um, like what you said about the conversations with yourself. I'm just finding like the universe telling me all the, you know, like I'm seeing all these things all at the same time that we're communicating this. And it's just really cool as a reminder for myself, but how can I communicate that to others and, and help them take action? So, yeah. And like, so in this summit on this, a thing I share, which I'll share now as well. It's basically to find out 
to dive into that story of why you're not doing stuff so people can at least listen the, the two listeners we have the listening can work it which is cool so you got your goal whatever that is you want to lose 10 kilos i mean what a you want to run a marathon cool be it the first thing i do and this is what we do in space builders too so we're trying to remove the anchors to move forward and the, so the first thing is yeah you got your goal why won't you make it hey, this is, every time you sit down and write a goal i want to do this why won't you make it there's proof in the past things that have happened before sabotaging your actions all that kind of stuff they're all there to sit down a piece of paper in one column have three columns on the left hand side why won't you make it and then you come back to it later i remember when i did this the first time it was over three weeks so it was over three weeks i was unpacking it and it was super powerful that space to, to do it because we weren't allowed to do it unless we were on a, the group call so it was like why won't you make it what does that say about you and how does it make you feel like one two three you got three columns just go straight across so one of my like i did the, a business one i was like i procrastinate what does that say about me is like i like i want to escape i just don't want to do the thing that's making me feel uncomfortable i want to feel good which is where i started leaning figuring out this whole thing of like the dopamine addiction is the real addiction i've got not all the other shit. that's just the thing to help me with the get my dopamine hit and what does it say about me is it's like i'm never going to make it like if i put those three things down and this is why our nature story that stuff helped me move more than anything else i ever did like miles better than anything else yes you got to build your avatar of who you want to be your alter ego and then you start trying to show up as that person but you want to put the efforts there to cut or raise those anchors first to allow you to flow into your alter ego free nature we call it the hero in space builders so you flow into that heroic version of yourself so you can just go without resistance without getting slammed with that anchor holding you back that exercise if everyone listening who does that it is crazy powerful it does feel a bit shit, like without a doubt because you're going into your past and like where you haven't been able to make it work before and you start to unpack why but once you know i think there was even a video by alex and moisey on this he did a video literally like a 60 minute video on something very similar it's like what's your goal why aren't you going to make it cool all those points flip them invert them that's how you're going to make it so like figure out a tool to overcome each one of those things it was such a simple tool like it is and a lot of this stuff is really simple on paper it's just doing it right and the big thing is it's like yes it's very simple on paper the hard work is understanding that your brain wants you to do the easy thing which is go back to your self-sabotaging behavior because it's what it knows the work is in figuring out what the trigger is and then switching over to the other version of you in the moment that's the probably the challenging part but it's creating a a gap between your triggers and actions that's what we want to try and do where we can shift you to like showing up for the very very simple stuff like it ends up being very simple like you stop looking for magic bullets and stuff once you unpack your subconscious shit that's what i don't think i actually got an email this is funny i got an email the other day i todd knows me i read tons of books and i listen to audio books like flat stick i haven't listened to like a businessy kind of podcast in ages i just listen to like tmz for pod, for obstacle racing really it's just that's pretty much all i listen to awesome. i had an email from audible and says this is like you got 10 credits to use i haven't downloaded a book in 10 months because doing the shadow stuff unpacking what my subconscious was sabotaging me with made me realize like i don't need to learn any more things it's just like a procrastination thing it makes me feel good to learn stuff but i'm not doing anything with it my alter ego my heroic self lack of a better word 
is the action taker, like moving towards the thing, doing the simple stuff every day. And I just realized I didn't have to learn a whole lot of shit. It takes a lot. It removes the fog and makes it so simple on what you need to show up for. And then it's just actively showing up for it and journaling about your wins and rewiring your brain, which is yeah, a bit of a, I don't know if that was a tangent, but if you do that shadow work stuff, what's the goal? Why aren't you going to make it? What does it say about you? How does it make you feel? If it doesn't make you feel like shit, go deeper. Cause it should make you feel like shit. If you're not going to make it, it should feel bad. Yeah. Or the goal you don't really care about. Change the right. goal. Which is, that's a big one too. So we can touch on that. Like, well, well, before we talk about the goal, I have one burning question. Mm. What did you do with the 10 credits? Nothing. They're just sitting <laughs> I know, there. I'm just, I want right. to make sure listeners weren't hanging on the edge about, <laughs> yeah. about what you were going to do with like, those. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get like the Lord of the Rings and a few other things. Because once the season's finished, I'm going back in the trail running. And I reckon I'm going to get, instead of getting, usually I listen to business books when I run. And I think I'm just going to get like fiction books yeah. and just listen to those awesome. instead and just see, well, cause there's a couple of books I want to read, but I keep falling asleep when I read them. So I'm just going to get them in digital yeah. format and run with them. But yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I haven't used them. <laughs> That's pretty funny. So back to the goals. Um, and so I guess maybe where you were going with this, but the question I get, I would have is, how do you know when to change the goal? I know you made it like relatively clear in, in doing that shadow work, but mm. how long do you try? Like, wh you know, what, what are some of the things um, that you use to reassess the goal and whether that it's still a big part of your life or not? That's good. So, cause I think when you're in the shit, it's hard to dream big. Because you're like, I can't see myself ever getting out of this. Oh, it would kind of like Dan John talks about it. It's like, there's like A to Z goals. There's some people who are in so much pain, they just want A to B. That's what they just, I just want. I'm, I don't feel good. I don't like what I am. I just want to be out away from that. So they're just, it's kind of like they're just moving in any direction. <laughs> like, I don't care. I just want to go. So when you're setting goals, this is my thing. I undershot my goals a lot. Like, cause I was just like, if I shoot you big, if I don't get it, that's, that's not cool. But that was my shadow down nature shit talking, getting me back. So I think it has to be exciting. And a lot of the things is like, we've talked about this a few times offline. And I think we're talking about it on the calls. We're in the health and fitness world. I'm sort of shifting away to the more mindset life coaching kind of stuff. But the amount of people that still don't go to gyms and train and that kind of stuff, because it just doesn't suit their personality. They set a goal and like, yeah, I want to do it, but they just don't like doing that stuff. And it's personality driven. Sometimes it's just like, like maybe it's not the personality thing. They just don't have the motivation to do it or their life sucks or whatever. But there's still so many people that will never, ever step forward into a gym because it's just not like, not their thing. So when you're setting a goal, the goal shouldn't be really like, like, it, like I'm trying to say it the right way, but it's got to be fucking exciting. It's got to be something that you're so excited to do. Like if you got that thing, it's going to be like, this is wicked. Like, this is so cool. So like literally my goals are like, I want to travel the world and do crazy fitness events. That's one of my big goals where I go to Hawaii and do the Spartan trifecta where they shot Jurassic Park, go to Greece and do it there, do an adventure race, like a whoop whoop, go do Machu Picchu because cats don't Machu Picchu and she just talks about it. And now I've got FOMO. Oh, well, she has? Yeah, I know. <laughs> She's like, it's this common joke that we have that keep, like, when people talk about going overseas, wherever we are at a party, I just turn it up, sort of slow look at Kat. And Kat just starts wetting herself laughing because she's probably been there. <laughs> she's done like mad amount of travel and I think I've been to Thailand. Um, so yeah, so 
those kinds of things is what I want to do. But also like, I want to work like a three, four hour day and stretch it to, to six on things that I like, mainly to be available for the kids and mainly be available for them. Yeah, this is like my two year goal. And I want to make like $10,000 a week to be able to do all that stuff without really thinking about it. Like it's a super elaborate goal. And I'm like with those constraints of like six hours a day, because they have to make, they have to figure out all this stuff to make that work, which is a cool problem to have. But the idea of like every quarter, I go overseas and do some kind of event and tying it in with space builders retreats where we take dads who are inside space builders and we go to a place and have a really cool retreat. And there could be an event there. And then the ones who want to do the event can, the others can just have this, this movement based retreat where it's like mountain therapy, so to speak. That shit lights me up. Like I could show up for that like all the time. So being in shape for being able to do that, to do adventure racing and be able to run for 10 hours on a much stupid hill. Like I say stupid hill. I love doing it. So it's not that stupid. The that's all the training I do is just to be able to do that for as long as I can. And then be able to say hell yeah to anything. So it did take a while for me to get to that stage, but now I've written it down, the stories. And I've got like a full, it takes me about 20 minutes to read the full story of it. Cause it goes through what I do every day, every week, every quarter, every year. It just excites me to do it. And if I can achieve that and the way to, I'm going to try and achieve those, I'd live it now in whatever way I can with whatever power I have. Because I don't have that income coming from the businesses yet that I'm working on. But I can still do most of that shit locally. We've got right. awesome trails and everything here anyway. So I can start living that life now and then it just expands on itself because I'm already doing it. So I think, yeah, back to the goal thing, it has to be something so incredibly exciting. And it's not like, it's not the sitting on the beach drinking margaritas thing. Because your brain will end up hating it after like two to three weeks. I think there's like, a, they did research on it. I think it's like two weeks. Once you get that, right? you, you get itchy feet. That's you want to go do something. The humans just want experience. And they want community and tribe and all that kind of stuff. So they want to be in that kind of environment. But yeah, big. Big thing, think, just excitement. Uh, aside from the the excitement, what are do you do you think? I'm trying to figure out if I want to leave it open ended or ask a specific question. But do you do you feel like these goals have to be or need to be or can be associated should be associated with and us do work on finding what our like passion and purposes are. Mm. Yeah, I think so. And I th oh. That's a toughie because the, I think you will find your, your passions and your purpose once you start going after the dream life you want to have, the epic dream life. Whatever that is, I love it. And, that, and that, I mean, that essentially answered it for me. I, yeah. that, that's kind of where I was going. Was like, um, I think, I think, because I think we, I think we're, I think a lot of people try to do it also backwards. So instead of mm. thinking of like they, they think, oh, well, now that I have this passion and purpose, I can go live this life. Um, and I think it's the other way around. It's it's like find find something that you want to shoot for and get really clear on what you want this life to be like, and then along the way in a positive way, you're just going to probably stumble into your passion and purpose if you don't feel that clear on it yet. But, but above all things, the worst thing you can do is stay stagnant. You're never going to find it there. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And maybe by luck or chance, but it's, it's just rare that you're going to find it, you know, not by not taking action. And that's, that's a really cool way to put it. Yeah. I think, yeah. And once you like, like we call it the North star, once you have that North star, and you kind of show up to do the work of this person, whatever it is, you figure out these actions that you got to do every day and make it simple. It doesn't have to be elaborate, but there's like three things I do for health. There's usually three things I do for my business. And there's three things I do for being in dad life. There's like nine things a day. If I hit those things, 
consistently, good shit happens. And then you kind of let go to the the outcome and just sort of follow the experience because really the actual experience is working your way towards the thing anyway. Because once you get it, you shoot for another one. Like the whole, once you get to Everest, go up to the next mountain. There is no next mountain past Everest, but yeah. The, <laughs> the, because like, that's one of my goals. It'd be, well, it was, was to go up Everest. It used to be a goal, but I recently saw a drone, total tangent. I saw a drone footage of it going over Everest and the people climbing it and the different camps and stuff. It, it felt like it was busier than like high shopping time in our town. It was tense everywhere. There was people everywhere. I was like, I actually don't know if I want to do that. Like yeah. struggle breathing around other people struggling breathing. <laughs> it's still, it'd be a cool experience, but it looked crazy busy. But anyway, the, I think when, like, cause I think about when I had my gym and people come in, like, I just want to lose 10 kilos. I just asked why, and it wasn't really anything really exciting for it. And then it's like, they know they just need to do stuff. But when you create that story of your dream epic life, pretty much, um, things fall in place. You start noticing things that you like, well, to make that happen, I probably should start doing this shit. And it's really easy to show up for. As long as you keep that, that dream life front of mind and it can change, like you can pivot to whatever, but the, you've always sort of going in that direction. And, the stuff you, we talk about it in the guidance coaching stuff all the time. Everyone's got the answers in their head already. So once you've got that North star, the stuff that comes out of what you know, you probably need to do to make that happen. That's probably already inside you. You already know the tools and everything yeah. already. And then, yeah, then we use the shadow work to knock off those anchors so you can show up as your hero to keep going. That always sounds very simple on paper. And it is very simple on paper, but it's the stuff that isn't the sexy marketing, I guess. I, yeah, it, well, it's not sexy marketing, but it's tough for us to, um, I've been through a number of these experiences. So when I, when I first got into like the online coaching and I was looking for all these mentors and. Um, I, what's interesting is I actually went on a, a retreat. We climbed a 14,000 foot mountain in Colorado, but all like, that photo, we, yeah. Yeah. So when we came off of there, like we, we, we still did some business stuff and worked on those. I'm, I'm, I, I, it's a lot clearer now. Um, but when I was asked to create that perfect day, it was a similar experience or, or just, it was like, take off any blinders, take off uh any restrictions that you can put on this perfect day in the future and write about it and i had the hardest time mm. and i want to bring this back to what you're talking about because i had the hardest time when things when it got easier to picture what my perfect day looked like was because i was taking massive action towards certain goals mm. so i hadn't really even at that time I hadn't, but I wasn't really clear on what my clinic could do and what I had to offer people and, and, the, and, you know, the place that I could take my clinic to now. Um, it's so funny. I want to revisit that because I couldn't picture what my clinic could do because I wasn't taking actions on implementing the systems and mm. implementing some of those things. Now that I have, it is so much clear what you know, my office can do financially and I'm excited about that. So all of that to kind of wrap up and sum up some of those things, like start working towards something, figure out a goal, figure out something that does light you up. And when you can start moving towards it, like you said, things will get clear. Um, and that's what's, that's what's happened for me is like, all of a sudden I was like, whoa, like I can see my, my, my office filling up with these chronic pain patients. I can see, you know, that I can get, you know, two to five new patients a week, which would turn my clinic into something that's never, you know, financially and, and just, um, 
as fulfilling as like it could ever be. And I'm really excited to see where that goes. So um, I don't know if that helped at all, but yeah. what you had said had triggered my own experience of like, if I were to look back three years ago, I was lost. I was in a dark place. I was, um, and I couldn't see what was out there. But when I redid this exercise, like a year later, I started to like things got clear. I wasn't as clear as I could be now, but things were getting clear. And it was because I was taking action and moving towards um, at least the goal that I thought I wanted at the time. So yeah, I think yeah, yeah, you touched on something really important, which is like, just movement. Like, not moving in the sense of exercise, but like, any steps a good step. Yeah. In the direction of your goal. It doesn't have to be huge. Which is that was my thing for a lot, which was looking for massive wins. Which turned out it was just my dopamine thing. I got huge dopamine hits when I had these huge financial wins or huge fitness wins or anything. But then I would always it always wasn't sustainable. I couldn't keep the win. I didn't have capacity to keep it. And I had to actually learn this through training first. So my arcs have always been like health. I had to get my work out my health system first and then my my relationship system and then prosperity part, which is the wealth part, will sort of come from getting those first two sorted. And the way we kind of talk about it with space builders is like once your health is right, you connect better with your relationships because you feel good in yourself. And then Prosperity is not easy, but simpler because you don't need as much stuff to feel good. You already feel good. The, the, the threat of like, I need this huge amount of income to have like a boat and a caravan and all that kind of, all that shit's cool. Like you can have all that stuff, but most of the time, if you get your health and relationships in alignment with what you want out of them, and especially with yourself, the need to have a lot of stuff to make yourself feel good just sort of goes down. You just don't need as much shit anymore. So for me, a lot of the thing was like, I didn't see it until like probably the last two, three years was the training side of stuff where I would just push so hard because I just loved the adrenaline from it, which is the dopamine thing again. And I could never keep it. I'll get injured and I'll start again. I'll get injured and start again. again. And just I'll just be like, this is a fun game. I get to rebuild all over again. It was like, it was kind of crazy. And then I had to sort of go, cool, this is, I can't do this anymore. I have to build my capacity to be able to just keep showing up without injury. And it's been like the last two, three years that my fitness is, and health has got to, got to where I wanted it to be finally, after like so many ups and downs, crazy diets and all that shit. I've been a coach for like 10 years and I've tried everything. And it was just really simple tools. I was like, I just want this to sit behind my work and my family, but it improves everything above it. And then, yeah, so it got that right. And then the relationship staff started, I did the same thing. Not like shooting for like big shifts and everything, like for myself, like big wins of me changing my mindset and all that kind of stuff. Just simple stuff that I could do every day, building a better capacity to handle more of life shit, which is what we want to do, especially as parents. Like how much of life shit can we handle and stay anti-fragile, stay resilient, keep showing up and not losing my shit really, which is that's still like a process I'm working through now. Like they're giving up the coffee thing was to get rid of the, a piece that was fragile. I was relying on caffeine. So it's like getting these things in place gradually. Once you start seeing this kind of working towards this vision of what you want, stuff starts popping up. And then you let go of some things and you gain some stuff. I think that's really, it could be scary for people because change is scary. It's the brain doesn't like change, but it's also really exciting. Like once you set that North star, like any good adventure, this is why I keep leaning into the adventure thing is like, we don't know the actual tools that will work straight away. Yes, there's some that like are givens, but there's ways you all got to do it that make it work for you. That's the exciting part, I reckon. 
And that's where, when you work through those story arcs, so if you work through your health and get yourself right, and then you get deeper connection with your relationships, your tribe, your family, your kids, all that kind of stuff. And you get so much wisdom and knowledge that you get into that prosperity arc and you're like, I want to live this awesome life, but I'm currently doing this nine to five that gives me this much money. You just collected all this wisdom that you can now share with other people and you can start coaching, creating information products, writing a book, all this stuff. It gives you this huge tool chest of things that you can start using to create wealth by helping, by being of service to people. It's really, really cool when you look at it that way, going through those kind of arcs. Because people, when you talk to people, like, I want to live this life. Like, I've got no skills. It's like, yes, yeah, skill up. Skill up on the stuff you learn for yourself and that stuff you can pass on. Right. It's the shit you've done wrong that you can talk to people about. Like, I've had three gyms and they're all closed for whatever reasons, outside circumstances and inside circumstances. A lot of it was, I take extreme ownership, so a lot of it was me. So when I talk to people locally who are opening a gym, I just have like this, this manual of stuff like this is the shit you don't want to do. Don't do any of this noise. None of this shit matters. Just do this stuff really well. And I keep getting asked to come and talk, like help out these gyms. They talk to each other and I'll go help them with marketing and stuff. So there's things you're going to learn on the way through that, that wisdom you can pass on is super powerful. That allows you to create the prosperity you want to live the life you, you desire, whatever that kind of looks like. I love it. Which is pretty cool. That's exciting for me. Yeah. I think, you know what? I mean, I, I, um, I didn't know that I wanted to do what you just shared all my life, but it's, it's becoming like that much more apparent. And I think even through the lessons that I've learned, taking the time to, to get like, sit down and understand like what wisdom you do accumulate from them. You realize that uh, there's a lot of us walking around with a lot of wisdom. Um, it just may not feel that way because we're living a little out of alignment because, you know, our, maybe our North star isn't clear and that's okay. So, but yeah, man. Um, I love this. Um, I've yeah. got, I got my mind, my mind's going right now. Oh, no, mine is too. I was like, I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna send you a message. I'm going to send you a message after this, but, um, yeah, I'll try, the... to, I'll try to recap. Um, unless you want to recap, but you can recap. You're good at recapping. Sign us uh, I'm trying to recap. <laughs> well, yeah, please take the time to listen to this. This is an important one because, uh, mm. you know, at 40 years old, I'm taking another look at life and realizing like, even if I live to the, you know, the, the expectancy, I expect to live longer than that, but I've got another 40 years. And I ask myself, what am I doing? Um, that is creating impact, not only for myself, am I living the life that I want to live, but am I creating, um, the impact on my wife, on my kids and on the people that I do come in contact with. And then above all else, the experience that I often rely on is losing my father. And, and I had this beautiful moment the other day where I was like, Am I making him proud? And, mm -hmm. and you know, however we kind of want to work through this in our mind, but I was like, I, I looked at his picture and, you know, and I was like, you know, your death is not in vain. You know, like, I'm like, it, it is, has inspired me to love deeper and um, just show up in ways that like, I never thought I could. And mm -hmm. it was a beautiful reminder to, that I can use that experience to, get more out of life or I can use it to be a victim and, and I, and I just don't choose to be a victim. So, um, but yeah, uh, all, all that to wrap up and say, like, we've got this one life and, and the work that we often avoid is the work that's going to allow for us to create the life that we want when, when we do that hard work. Yeah. And it's like what I said to you, I just go, it's like, let it fly. What are the goals? Just let it rip. Yeah. As they're outrageous as they could be, it's still the excitement of going after it. Should be enough to light you up to show up for the simple stuff. It doesn't have to be outrageous things. 
but something that excites you to do it. Yeah. And that way you don't have, you can save your motivation and willpower for other things. Like I save my willpower and motivation for kid stuff, juggling Theo stuff, putting it there instead of the health and fitness shit I got to do. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. It's good. This is awesome. Episode 20. That's right. Like, subscribe, share, all that cool shit. You know, the, yeah, do all that stuff. Do all that cool stuff. I've got to get better at putting up show notes in properly. Yeah, re- I think I'm going to start just bringing people in. So we'll have yeah. this. Sounds really bad. We'll have a three way conversation. <laughs> <laughs> but the have people come in and we'll just do this kind of stuff, like round tables as well. Yeah. I love it. That'd be cool. All right, man. Good to chat. See you, everybody. All right, have a good one. Bye bye.